On the other side of flex grow, we have the flex shrink property. As you might have already guessed, flex shrink defines the ability for a flex item to shrink if necessary. And unlike flex grow, the default value for flex shrink is 1. However, the flex shrink factor again is still relative to the other items in the container. So let's understand with the UI. Now the first point to make note of is that flex shrink is set to a value of 1 by default for every single flex item. And that is why if I try to reduce the width of the parent container, the flex items shrink to fit inside the container. In case you missed that, let me repeat it. You can see the flex items width and if I decrease the screen size, the width of the flex items also decrease. They are shrinking. Now the shrinking is possible only up to a certain point after which the items simply overflow. So if I reduce the width further, you can see that item 9 is not visible anymore. Now let's say you don't want this shrinking happening on the flex items. For that, simply set the flex shrink value to 0. So go back to Visual Studio Code and on the flex item class, which is applied to every flex item by the way, set flex shrink to a value of 0. Now if I go back to the browser, refresh this, you're going to see that there is no more shrinking and the items overflow right away. So you can see that item 9 is not visible anymore. There was no shrinking happening. So by setting flex shrink to a value of 0, you can prevent the shrinking from happening. Of course, it is possible to control the shrinking for individual items as well. So let me go back to Visual Studio Code. I'm going to comment this and add a flex shrink of let's say value 4 to item number 2. Now what this specifies is item 2 is going to shrink four times as much as the other items. Remember, this is a relative factor. So if all other items shrink by 25 pixels, item 2, which has a flex shrink factor of 4, is going to shrink four times as much. So 4 into 25, 100 pixels. So let's see this in action. And just for demonstration purpose for flex shrink, I'm going to add a width property to flex item class to make all the items look larger. So width is going to be let's say 8 rems and I'm going to comment out some of the items. So now if I refresh, so we have items 1 through 5 and you can see that all the items occupy the same space. If I start decreasing the width though, you can see that item 2 decreases more than the other items. And this is purely because flex shrink is set to a value of 4 on item 2. So it is going to shrink in size 4 times faster than the other flex items. Now similarly, you can set flex shrink to a value of 2 on item 3 and test how that turns out to be. From this example, you can see that flex grow and flex shrink are helpful when you want the important content on your page to grow or the less important trivial content to shrink based on the screen size. So the flex shrink property dictates the shrink factor of the flex items when the default size of the flex items is larger than the flex container. And it is always relative to other items in the container. By default, the value is 1 which dictates the items should shrink to a certain extent if necessary.